One of the main attractions of St. Kitts and Nevis is actually here in San Sandy Point and is the Brimstone Hill Fortress National Park. So the fortress was obviously created by the British using slave labor to secure the island as many fortresses are usually for. But let's go and learn the history of this particular place. I think the white patches are limestone mines. They used to be limestone mines. So right at the entrance you find this lime kiln, which is one of the largest and best preserved lime kilns in the Western Hemisphere. Western Hemisphere. So the furnaces at the bottom were used to heat the limestone, which was mined on the hill. Wow. So this is one of the largest lime kilns in the Western Hemisphere. Western, Hemi Hem Western Hemisphere is huge, guys. So this fortress has a lot of such history. And most of its history, as you know, is tied to slave trade. Ticket is 40 EC or 15 US per person. Residence is 10 EC. So this one used to be the magazine uh, place. Like they used to keep the bullets and stuff. Uh, and uh, so this is just the entrance there is a very long walkway and up there so we are gonna go but this is just the beginning see all the way up there so one of the major attractions here for the, from the fort is actually the views and that's why one of the reason i came and right now i'm gonna show you one of the best views of sandy point when we get up there we're gonna still see it but i couldn't help it so here we are See? <laughs> that is amazing so that is sandy point town and all the way over there is a french island that you can see and then you can see the mount uh, La laguimia or something like that and you can see the fortress and the entrance <laughs> but this view is to die for wow so beautiful the charm of the caribbeans from the mountains to the sea let me take you on a walk down memory lane as i walk to the historical fortress and yes pun intended so this fortress was built in 1690 at least that's when the first canons were established and it was built over 100 years designed by british royal engineers but built hand by the hands of african slaves stones bricks everything african slaves and it was built so that the British can protect themselves from the French. They had wars over the 1700s and they realized this was a really prime spot. Just there you can see the island by the French. So British and French were always having that sort of fight over the island. And then in 1852, the fortress was abandoned because they didn't need to protect the place anymore or something like that. And then in 1983, St. Christopher and Nevis gained its independence from the British. And later, two years later, the Queen unveiled this place as a museum. It became a UNESCO heritage in 1999. So it's preserved by UNESCO as a heritage site. And today is one of the most visited places in St. Kitts and Nevis. Literally, when people leave the ship, the cruises, for only one day, they come directly here to see the fortress and afterwards they go to the beach. That is what they usually do. <laughs> so, yes, the view gets better and better. So that down below there is a storehouse on this side. You can see the marina, the 
boat marina and that town over there is halfway tree point and then over there there is one called old road town and bastia is on the other side so this is the half of the island the east the west side of the island sandy point you can see the road and it goes on and on and on prince of wales bastion this is also the main entrance you can see the booth where the guard used to stay at so this bastion was completed 100 years after the fort was established and it was named in honor of the prince of wales who was the heir at the time in 1794 you can see all the canyons ready to bomb everybody who tries and dare attack so down there there used to be the hospital and the cemetery and the storehouse three today's modern buildings of the information center and you've also got a souvenir shop right over there you can buy your gifts and the visitors and the parking of course so this is where the quarters were for the infantry troops i know a lot of you will not know what those are unless you play games and then you know exactly what infantry troops are So these quarters are underground from the top but from this side they have such a nice view so this is where the soldiers the infantry troop soldiers used to stay they are their quarters you can see like toilets and bathrooms and uh, it's not the worst view in the world <laughs> honestly look at that so you wake up in the morning and you see that and then you go man your cannon and wait for the soldiers to come attack you I'm not sure if that's a good life or not <laughs> but the view is definitely good see So this one here is Monkey Hill. It's raining almost. <laughs> so this is the end and it's called Monkey Hill Flop. More views of the island.
So this is the western place of arms and as you can see the defense points they were defending against Sandy Point, against the French Island and against number three which is uh, Islands of Saba and you can see St. Martin all the way to number five. Wow, this is St. Martin and St. Bethel. Bethel, let me. There you go. You cannot see St. Martin today because the clear the sky is not so clear. You can see number four, which is St. Eustatius. St. Eustatius is a French island. You can see it clearly. The one behind it, St. Martin. No, number three is Islands of Saba. You can really not see it because it's not a clear day today. But yeah, in the itineraries. Man, do these people love war. Look at that. And finally, you go into the museum. So, bring, this is a national park and the museum, which is part of the ticket. And here you can also learn about the slave trade, how the people from Africa, West Africa, were brought to the Caribbean as well as to Brazil, which was one of the other main slave trade hubs. So a soldier ate, trained, bathed, drunk with friends. <laughs> saluted <laughs> slavery was much less fun they walked and walked and walked some more and got chained up and then there was war oh I thought I was a real person looks so real there's a uniform of a real soldier so in this museum you learn a lot about the history of the slave trade as well as the activities that happen in the actual fortress from how their day-to-day -day activities as well as what happened when they got sick and where there was the hospital. The main ailments here were malaria and the flu, there was typhoid as well as sexually transmitted diseases and a lot of those things and when soldiers got sick they would be sent back home when slaves got sick well their case wasn't so beautiful was it so yeah these are it's a place just like many forts you visit that just reminds you of the slave trade that was a really really grim part of humanity and uh, it is part of the history we cannot deny it but we can work to never repeat it and also you know get rid of the modern day slavery right So here you've got the orientation room where you can get a video about the place but you cannot record anything outside and then you've got the gift shop where you can buy souvenirs from St. Kitts and the information center is on the other side. <laughs> 